So I wanted to take a second before dark to show off how we're making this net this evening. Uh, we've taken, and this is all made out of jute cord. It can be made out of any cord that you want, depending on the strength that you want your net to be. This is a jute cordage. Uh, on the top is a double reverse wrapped uh, section of thicker line. And then I have uh, single strands of jute uh, hanging down about four inches or so, uh, all the way uh, to the length that you want your net to be. These are attached to the thicker top line with just an overhand knot uh, so they won't slide anywhere. That You can use a different knot and they'll kind of bunch up as the net or as the top line moves uh, but this will keep uh, the net uniform and straight uh, for its entire life. So this is the last runner that I'm attaching to the stronger top line and the way I do that is simply an overhand knot. It's just like tying your shoe uh, the first knot that you do that, I put my finger on top so the knot doesn't slide anywhere and then I lift this bottom strand up and push it through the hole and then it starts to form uh, a knot like you're tying your shoe and then I cinch that tight and that was halfway on my my runner. So now we're going to start weaving the net. So starting the net is probably the most difficult thing and then the concept really uh, makes itself apparent as the uh, net progresses. But So we've taken our top line. Uh, this could also uh, be a, a sapling or a, a sapling that's been bent around in a circle to make a dip net. But since we're making a gill net, uh, what we want to do is, uh, here's our first string. Leave that for now. Then take our uh, one string from this and then one string from the next runner section and tie uh, an overhand knot or a loop, I'm not exactly certain the name of this knot, but you, you just go around your finger making a loop and then coming back through pulling it and then dressing your knot so that's uh, evening the tension out and positioning it uh, for where you want it to be and that's formed our first section of net now we move to the next one and we take this one and one from this and repeat that process that we just did by tying these together. We make a loop and then come behind it and pull your string through. And then dress the knot again and we want to get it equal with this one. Those are even, starting to look pretty good. So I just finished off the first set of knots and like uh, I did on the beginning, I left one hanging and it's gonna come back uh, really important when we start the second row. You can see that the row of triangles is really starting to emerge. That pattern of the net. And as we come back to the beginning, we're gonna start our second row. The way we do that is we just take the, the string that we left hanging before and we continue that knot making pattern from before. So we make the loop and then push it through and dress the knot so it looks pretty and it's the size that you want. You can account for some errors in the rows uh, previously by moving the knots around uh, to keep the knots even in the long run, but uh, as you start tying these knots, you start seeing the diamond pattern emerging that much more. So now the top row is complete, and we're back to our original pattern of having two strands and two strands instead of one hanging down by itself. So we start with this pattern like we did at the beginning and tying these two together. Make our loop, push the tails through, and continue adding our next row. So after working on this a little bit you can see the net pattern uh, starting to emerge. You can see how much material it's really gone and eaten up from what turned into about four feet uh, or five feet of cord we now have uh, maybe two feet, a little bit less of net. 
So it's important to know how to uh, add more lengths of fiber uh, to your net. And so you can see that I've trimmed the bottoms off uh, nicely so that there's not too much tassel uh, hanging off the end. And then what I'm going to do uh, to add more to that, I just need to tie more rope to it. So I've folded my rope in half uh, just like I did to start uh, the process. And I put the loop uh, through the back and then make it a little bit larger. Pull these two ends uh, through the loop. So again, uh, it goes through the loop, through the net hole, and then around the knot, pulling it through. And then that'll give me extra length to then continue making the net as I attach uh, more uh, runners to it. So to add extension runners to this net, one more time, I take the uh, piece that I want to add and fold it over uh, to form a loop. I take that loop, push it through the back, bring it down, and take the two strands from the back and push it through. And then cinch, the knot cinches around the previous knot to give you two more runners in a firm connection. As the net gets longer, it gets a little bit unmanageable to be bending down and adding uh, extensions to these runners. So what I did was take it a stick and put it in the net and then wrap, wrapped it around uh, the cord to kind of give me a roll and uh, make it a little bit easier to manage as I tie the lengths together and make the net a bit larger. So this net is pretty much done. Uh, it's about the size that I want it. This is going to be used to catch a bird that needs to be re relocated. But uh, you can make this uh, net as large as you need to, whether you want to fence off an entire river to catch everything that comes through it, or uh, you want to secure something to the back of your truck. Uh, here's a really good uh, means to do that uh, in making a net. So we talked about rigging uh, the line across the top and sending some runners down and then tying these overhand loops to form uh, the net pattern. We even talked about adding more rope to your net and you can see uh, the line that goes across uh, in the center of the screen. And it's barely even apparent that we added more rope so it'll be plenty strong and uh, stand up to a lifetime of use. Uh, of course as these things get used they start getting ripped out so you'll have to uh, do some net repair. But uh, if you have any questions and want to learn more about survival you can get some of the best survival training in the world at uh, survivalschool.us.